What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the program. As you know, my name is Dr. Dan. I'm a pharmacist turned obesity expert. And today we're going to kind of take a bit of a step back. I want to talk about some things that maybe I haven't dived into quite enough or have mentioned in a lot of other videos. But I figured it was time we dedicate one sole video talking about the mechanism of action of these GLP-1 medications like Saxenda, Wagovi, and Mangero kind of. Now, the reason why I want to tell you about the mechanism of action, like how these drugs actually work in the body, is because, well, I'm a big believer in the why. Why does something work the way that it does? You see, for myself anyways, the better understanding I have of the why or the mechanism of action, the better I'm able to troubleshoot or, you know, make some predictions when new insights and things arise. So when someone's talking to me about the side effects of a medication, well, hot damn, if I know how that medication is working and where it's working at, then I can figure out what is the mechanism and what potentially is going on there. For another example, if we look at the bad drivers that, you know, don't really know how to merge onto a highway and they expect that big fifth wheeler that's coming up behind them to go from 110 kilometers an hour to like 80 kilometers an hour, you know, some people might think, well, they are there to annoy you, to allow you to practice your swear words and stuff like that. But I would like to think that they are there, well, to help me practice my anger management skills very much an, an ongoing practice and man do they really know how to test it and that is what i'm going to continue to tell myself at least until we get self-driving cars for everybody so with that in mind i wanted to create this video on the glp1 medication saxenda ozempic you name it i want to talk about how these drugs work how they help us to lose weight and ultimately how we can know and understand some of the side effects that come with them. So let's get into it. And of course, everyone, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below so that you don't miss another episode when it comes out, but also helping to boost my self-esteem and self-confidence every single time one of you guys subscribes and follows me. Of course, check me out on my other channels at The Official Dr. Dan. We are on the tick, the talk, the gram, the book, the tweets, you name it, we are out there. I post more daily and regular content there, so if you have some questions and stuff like that, definitely post them down there. As well, check out my website, healthevolved.co where you can book a free consultation with myself and we can see if you're a good fit for our program. Wagovi, Saxenda, Ozempic, Trulicity, Victoza, and Mangero. Well, kind of Mangero. Mangero is like slightly different in some respects, which I'll address in a future video. I have talked about Mangero in a previous video, so check out that link down below. But we'll make a specific video on that medication and how it works in terms of management. But for the other guys, we are going to be talking about them today and specifically how they fall under a class of medications called the GLP-1 receptor agonists. Now GLP-1 is obviously an acronym. It actually stands for glucagon-like peptide 1. So what GLP-1 actually is, is it's a hormone that's naturally produced by our bodies. So when it comes to the GLP-1 medications, what people much, much smarter than me have figured out is they've basically learned how to create nearly identical copies of our naturally produced GLP-1 hormone. And essentially it is identical to our naturally produced hormone with the exceptions of a few modifications that allow it to be concentrated into a vial and for you to inject it as well some modifications that allow it to be able to hang out in our bodies for a much longer period of time than what our natural GLP-1 hormone does. So what these modifications allow for is they allow for the medications to mimic the GLP-1 hormone and to continuously exert the effects that the natural GLP-1 hormone already produces within the body. Now, believe it or not, the GLP-1 medications have actually been around for quite some time. The first GLP-1 medication to come to market in 2005 
was called Bieta or Exenatide. It was brought to the market for the management of type 2 diabetes. Um, some of you may have been on it. Some of you might have seen it at some point in time. It really is not prescribed anymore since better options such as Ozempic, Trulicity and such are on the market now and have kind of pushed those first generation guys out of the scene. If we include all of the pre-approval research and data and information that we have collected on these medications, we essentially have a good solid 20 plus years of experience in working with the GLP-1 medications. Unfortunately, as with all things that come to the complexity of the human body, we have a pretty solid understanding of you know the various things that the GLP-1 hormone does, but we don't know exactly everything. So today I'm going to review what we do know and some of the kind of maybe not so well known stuff. To start off, let's talk about how the GLP-1 hormone helps to manage our blood sugars. First up, it gives our pancreas a nice little massage. At least this is kind of what I would imagine it's like. It's kind of massaging the pancreas. And you can kind of think of this massage of our pancreas like the massage you might get at a nice, beautiful, tropical destination and not the painful and soul-crushing deep tissue massage that my therapist will inflict on me every few months, so basically I don't, I don't fall apart entirely. Anywho, what the pancreas does is it produces insulin. Insulin helps to bring our blood sugar levels down. So, if our pancreas is getting a nice massage from the GLP-1 hormone, what that's going to do is allow the pancreas to produce more insulin and bring our blood sugar levels down. Capiche? You got it? Clear as mud? Maybe, maybe not. Anyways, the second thing that it does in helping to manage our blood sugar is that it has a, has a chat with our liver. Now, why is chatting with the liver important? Well, our liver naturally produces sugar. So when our blood sugar levels are low and just keeping our blood sugar levels at a nice steady rate, essentially, the liver will produce sugar to basically keep the rest of our body in tip-top shape and running as it should. However, in conditions like diabetes or insulin resistance, the liver can get a little bit carried away in terms of the sugar production. And therefore, increased sugar production means increased sugar in the blood, which then elevates your blood sugar levels. And I assure you, the liver means well. It's doing the best that it can. It's just getting some improper signaling. And so that's where the GLP-1 hormone comes in, is it has a little chat with the liver and tells it to calm the F down. And once it has this little chit chat, ultimately the sugar will then shut down or bring down the level of sugar production. And at that point in time, what happens is your blood sugar levels will come down in conjunction with the extra insulin that is being produced by the pancreas. So that's that's managing our blood sugars, but what about weight loss? And of course, I have saved the best for last. First up, what the GLP-1 hormone and GLP-1 medications do is they slow down digestion. Similar to a bad driver that doesn't know how to merge into rush hour, it will ultimately slow down digestion like the bad driver will slow down traffic. So, the food that you eat ultimately moves more slowly through your GI tract. And so it sits in your stomach for a longer period of time, it sits in your intestines for a longer period of time, and what this ultimately causes is you get more of a sensation of feeling full. Now, the bad thing about this is that, well, if food and stuff like that is not going down at a good steady rate and it's going more slowly, the portions and stuff that maybe you ate previously, or if you happen to be really enjoying some food and you overeat on that food, when it has nowhere to go in terms of going down, well, the only way it's gonna go is back up. And so this, effect essentially can cause one of the main side effects or contribute to one of the main side effects that comes with the GLP-1 medications, which can be nausea, in rare instances vomiting, especially if you overeat or overconsume, and also it can lead to constipation because things are not moving as quickly through the GI tract, so we get slowed down a little bit and we can get some gridlock. Now, to manage these side effects and such, if you're experiencing them at all, or if you're concerned about experiencing them, check out my previous videos. All the links are down below. I've gone over how to manage the nausea, the vomiting, the heartburn, the constipation, the diarrhea. If it's been a side effect that's been there, I have essentially talked about it. Maybe not all of them, but pretty darn close. Now, the final thing that I want to mention here in terms of this slowing of digestion is that kind of like the bad driver and kind of like gridlock and rush hour, 
eventually things will start moving at a normal speed. So we really consider this a side effect that will eventually go away. And this actually isn't the main way that it helps us to manage our weight because your GI tract will eventually pick up to its normal speed and you'll be able to consume and eat more food and not have the aspect of nausea and really that huge increase in fullness and such. So. That leads me to my second point on how the GLP-1 hormone and medications ultimately help us to manage our weight, especially into the long term. And that has to do with brain power. And a bit of a fun fact for you, when it comes to managing our weight and it's particularly our appetite and hunger and food seeking behaviors, most of that signaling occurs within the brain. Contrary to popular belief that it's all being driven by your stomach, it's actually all being driven by up here. And so that is the main area that the GLP-1 medication acts within is helping us to mitigate and control our appetite, our food seeking behaviors, our liking and wanting of food. It essentially is able to cross the blood brain barrier and bind to the various areas in particular in our hypothalamus to help us regulate our appetite and such like that. Now, the ability to cross the blood-brain barrier is kind of one of the, the ideas as to why some of the medications such as Ozempic and Wagovi may be more effective than medications that are like Trulicity. Trulicity just can't get into the brain as well, it seems, and therefore doesn't have as great of a weight management effect. And so overall, the GLP-1 hormone and the GLP-1 medications are decreasing your appetite, they are increasing that fullness signaling, and they are decreasing your wanting and liking of food. And so you will be less likely, first off, to go and eat that cookie that might be in the break room. And even if you do eat that cookie, you're probably not going to enjoy it as much as you might have previously. Collectively, all of this together will likely lead to a decrease in your overall calorie intake. And if your calories that are going in are less than your calories that you're burning, you will lose weight. Hopefully that's kind of answered a few questions as to how these medications are working. For the clinicians and nerdy types, yes, there are definitely some more intricate details and specifics and stuff like that at various receptors. I could write article after article on all the various mechanisms of action in terms of the details around that. However, for simplicity's sake and just for the general understanding, these are kind of the main things that the GLP-1 medications are doing within our bodies. Overall, the GLP-1 hormone is a pretty cool little hormone. It's been really life-changing since we've discovered it and how it works and all the benefits that do come with it. There is tons of research in the pipeline that is showing other potential benefits that these little hormones can potentially offer. And really, we're on a, on a really cool track to really make some groundbreaking changes in terms of medication and things that are gonna be coming to the market in the coming years for not only diabetes management, but also for weight management. Of course, I will do my bestest to keep you updated on all the above. And in the interim, again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. As well, check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan, and you can check me out at my website, healthevolve.co, where you can not only sign up for my mailing list, but you can also see if you wanna book a consultation with myself, and we can see if you're a good fit for our program in helping you with your weight management journey. So until next time, my friends, you can leave your questions down below or shoot them to me on another platform. But I want you to always remember that small tweaks lead to massive peaks.